Hello, hello, my name's Gordon from Drayson Design and I'm Taylor from The Creative Thinker. And welcome to This Week with Taylor and Gordon, a weekly podcast where we talk about things that have affected our businesses as self-employed people over the last seven days. And it's been a busy seven days again? Yes, always. Always a busy seven days. And something that we've found uh, ourselves doing over the last week is working a lot more uh, late into the night. Um, which we have spoken about before. Uh, it means that we end up getting up later, but it means for me, in fact, I get a lot done. Are you yeah. the same? Yeah, me too. I find that, you know, I don't get any emails from clients or anything because they've sent them throughout the day. Um, and so I'm, I'm not distracted by them. Um, there's not many people up, uh, even online. There's I've got a couple of friends in America who are normally up and I chat with them. But apart from that, no one's really up. So I just I get on with work because there's not much else to do. So that works quite well for certain times. I don't recommend it long term. Uh, I don't think that's good for your health to be working just in the evenings. There are people who work at night only, um, but uh, you know they have pretty much the whole day to to recover and I'm guessing they've worked their life around that lifestyle. Um, but uh, for every now and then, working late in the night, you get into a sort of a, a vibe, don't you? Yeah, definitely. I put my headphones on and just yeah, get on with it. So we've been doing that a little bit this week. Um, uh, anything in particular that stands out for you this week? Um, I've been working a lot in collaborating with people. Right, okay. And you've also had uh, you had an interview today as well. Yeah, so I, was, um, I had an interview with my old school, uh, the alumni, uh, basically asking me, you know, what I was doing now, where I am, and kind of giving my, my feedback on how I found Rygate and how that's helped me to be where I am, really. Which is very good, because they're going to promote that on social media and tell, um, you know, new and current students about, you know, what uh, what a past student has done, yeah. which, is, which is great. It's good to be able to see what other people have done, to see what's possible. Um, I've got a podcast that I'm going to be on coming up in the next week or so, next seven days. I'm going to be doing a podcast. Uh, I think you've done a podcast recently. Yeah. Did we speak about this before? Um, I can't remember, but hmm. I was on a friend's podcast who um, we were talking about mental health for men and stuff like that because it's, you know, not um, talked about enough. And, you know, just my experience of it and how I overcame it and things like that and kind of what I do to deal with stuff like that. And when's that out? Do you know? Um, I think it's out next week or this week. I'm not sure. Okay. If if we um, if we get the link for that, we'll put it in the show notes so that you can go and have a listen if you would like. Uh, one thing we have changed recently is the numbering and naming convention for our episodes. So you would probably have seen last week we put S two E thirty five, which is season two episode 35. We explained last week that we were going to be using a new season and we've decided that this is probably the best way to, na to name them, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to have S2, meaning season two, and then this one's going to be episode 36. So we're going to continue with the numbering. Yeah. So we know where we are, but just change the season number depending on the year. Yeah, exactly. So let's start with uh, some topics today. Do you want to go first or second? What would you I'll prefer? go second. You go second. Okay, so I will talk about my topic. So this week I wanted to talk about crowdfunding. So crowdfunding, uh, for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, um, there are two main um, websites or companies that do crowdfunding, and that is Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Now, the concept behind crowdfunding is really very interesting. So for, for consumers, for people who purchase and for companies who are creating, um, it works very differently for those two. So let's look at, um, let's look at the companies creating first. Yep. So if you are a company, um, or it doesn't have to be a company, if you're an individual and you have a an idea, something you think is going to work well, but you have absolutely no funding for it, what you can do is you can go onto one of these two websites, there are others, but these are the two big ones, and you can basically state your case, okay? So if it's a new product, if it's a new service, 
if it's um, there's people who go on there and create new packs of cards or a board game or a book that they want to print um, and they have most people actually these days have the majority of the work already done so for example if you're writing a book they've pretty much written the book and now comes the expensive bit they've got to get it printed and that is really expensive especially if you aren't entirely sure how many to print because the thing with printers is the more you print the cheaper each unit becomes so crowdfunding will allow you to state your case and put up exactly where you are, what your idea is, what you're going to be doing and put it up for sale. And people back you based on what they want. So basically you would have, um, sometimes you'd have different levels depending on if that is relevant. So you could have, you know, buy one book and it will cost you this normally plus shipping. Shipping is normally yeah. extra. Uh, or you could buy two books and it will cost you this. Or you could buy five books and you could have them signed and it will cost you this. And basically the consumers come in and they choose which level they want to purchase at or which tier. And uh, that is then paid for. And I, I forget, it's been a while since I've done it, but I think it's paid for once the date. Ah, oh, yes, I remember. Excuse me about this. It's, it's been a while. I've done a lot of these, not not um, creating, but buying. Uh, and it's been a while since I've done one. But you have a deadline that you want to um, get funded by and you have an amount of money that you want to achieve. So your goal, basically. And if you reach your goal or exceed your goal on the date, your deadline date, then you get funded. And at that point, anyone who's who's put their hand in the air, say, yeah, I'll go for that, I'll buy that, will then have their cards debited. And the money after expenses from the various companies will be sent through to the creator to allow them to then do what it is they need to do. Um, so that's it from the company side or the individual, the creator's side. Um, and the advantage to them is they'll get a chunk of providing people want it. And to be honest, if people don't want it, well, you've saved yourself a ton of money by not producing it. But as long as people want it, you get funded for the expensive bit, which is normally the production. Yes. So the production costs of a product or a service or um, uh, an, an item, basically. Um, so from the consumer's point of view, you are normally going to be getting these items with special perks. So you might get, uh, you know, stick with our book analogy. Um, you might get the book that's been signed. You might find that the author is going to have a page or a few pages in the book, which will include the names of backers as a way to say thank you. So you will be uh, part of the book. Um, it might be that you will get an extra, you know, sleeve, you know, colour sleeve or um, there'd be another extra or perk. Uh, quite often you get it at slightly reduced cost to what it is going to be to everyone else who doesn't back. So you come into this process and you look at the, the various rewards and you decide if you would like to back it. And if you would you then sign up, put your credit card details in, and if it gets funded, you pay. Now, there is a risk involved. And the risk is that even though you are backing this product, it may never see the light of day. Most of the backers will, uh, most of the individuals or the creators will put in risk assessments and they'll tell you where they are, at what stage they're at, what needs to happen, what could potentially go wrong when the expected delivery date is going to be. And as a consumer, you have to look at this and go, hmm, is this worth the risk? Do they have a track record? Have they done this before and delivered on time, on budget? Uh, and you have to do your own due diligence, basically, just to make sure that you're not going to get 
um, your money taken and never get anything back. And the thing is, because you are backing it, it's never a certainty. So if the product never comes to life, it never happens, you don't get your money back. It's not like the purchase of a product where if that product doesn't arrive, you get your money back. You are effectively um, investing in this product and you're getting the rewards, uh, but also taking the risks as well. Uh, now, I've done, actually both of us have done yes, have really. done backing on this. Um, what, what have you backed in the past? Um, I've backed a portable charger that was um, probably... You know, quite quite small, probably half the size of a, a phone. Yeah, and that um, was successful. Yeah, that one. You got it, and it worked as expected. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Anything else? I don't think so. I think that's everything. Um, so I've backed quite a few things. Most of them have had happy endings. Not all of them, sadly. Um, probably the biggest thing I backed was a um, a case, a bag. Um, it was a photography badge, actually a photography bag. Um, from a company called Peak Design. Peak Design, thank you. I knew you'd remember. Uh, and it's a fabulous bag. Um, Peak Design actually launch all their new products on Kickstarter. And that's where I got mine. Uh, and I've purchased other products through Kickstarter, funnily enough, uh, when they came back with new products. Um, and I've been extremely happy with my, my bags. They're lovely bags. Um, I've also backed um, a watch. I got a, a Pebble watch. That was way back when. That was sort of at the beginning of Kickstarter. Uh, also a tripod, a little, it's not a tripod, a little stand, which we actually used for this, this uh, vidcast um, to record and hold up our camera uh, for a long time. We've, we've moved now to a Gorillapod but uh, originally it was a credit card sized, I should, I should have brought it to show because that would have been great. Uh, a credit card sized stand that you can twist and it will hold your phone in exactly the right angle that you want it to, yeah, to stand in. Like uh, and you got one as well, I got one for you. Um, however, I've also invested in two um, drones, flying drones, remote controlled using mobile phones. And one of those arrived with me, but the software never worked. And the other one never arrived. Didn't even get it. Um, money lost. I've also invested one other thing. This was on Indiegogo. As a magician, there's such a thing as um, the mind reading fish. It's a little bit of red cellophane that you put on your hand. And depending on how it reacts, will tell you your fortune not mind reading, fortune telling fish. So if it curls up, it means one thing. If it wags its tail, it means another. If it wags its uh, head, it means another. If it curls up long ways, it means another thing. And somebody decided that they wanted to do this in the shape of balloon dogs, balloon animal dogs. Um, and so I backed it. It was great. I put about $180 US dollars worth of backing onto this. Um, and they had problems. They could never get it to work. They apparently attempted to to use different materials. They attempted um, to change the shape slightly. Whatever they tried, eventually they thought they had it working when they, they put it up for backing, um, but it never happened. And it's left a bit of a bad taste actually because the creator didn't didn't come forward enough to say, look, we've had problems. You know, it's going to be a struggle to do this. We've basically spent all the money we had doing our tests and we don't have anything to show for it. Um, he just went silent. He refused to speak to anyone. He's a magician in the magic community, which is a very small community. His name is not very highly thought of by certain people who backed this and lost all their money. Um, and it was a really, a really bad experience, as it turns out. Uh, I don't want to put anybody off because you can get some great bargains and you can invest in something really early and be, be getting a really good product at the end of it. You, I'm just suggesting you 
do your due diligence and you know cover your bases before you put any money down and the other thing is don't spend money on it if you haven't got it to to waste that's not the right wording if you haven't got it to spare it's a bit like the stock market they always say don't invest in the stock market if you can't afford to lose the money and it's very true in this case as well uh, so you can get yourself a bargain go and have a look see what's on there there's loads of things that go on uh, all the time uh, there may be something that would be of interest to you have a look see if it's uh, if it's something you believe will actually happen put your money down get yourself a bargain that is uh, that's it from the consumer point of view as a creator if you have got a product or a service and you need backing because it's an expensive thing to produce have a look at their terms uh, this is Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Have a look at their terms because they do take a percentage of all the money that comes in and see if you think you've got the margins to do it and give people a good deal because obviously the better the deal, the more people are going to jump on board. Um, but it may be a way for you to do what you want to do without actually spending a lot of your own money. Uh, and, and it's a good way to publicise it as well. You get lots of other, you get lots of people who are interested in it telling other people about it. Um, so that's it. Crowdfunding. Great. Go and have a look. Um, so this week I wanted to talk about how I've been collaborating and working with um, another developer uh, okay. and kind of web designer. Um, and he specialises in kind of, well, he's released um, lots of tutorials and a course um for a um, small community of uh, oxygen for people that want to use oxygen so this is video courses yes and oxygen is a wordpress builder for those who aren't aware of and, it and um so he he creates courses and alongside that he creates tutorials like free tutorials that um he releases that you know could be helpful you know little things here and there and i've kind of over the time built up a kind of big um, collection of code snippets with Kind of some cool things that i've done and features and i've just basically been sharing them and kind of think of kind of come up with new ideas just just to help him you know I, so sharing it with the community yeah i mean that that's my main thing you know I, i'm going to use them for myself so i mean i might as well just share them with people and hopefully they can benefit mm -hmm. but i don't have any kind of real interest in recording videos editing them and you know making a step-by-step -step guide I so you're not it. really an educator, no, or a tutorial maker. You're you're more of a uh, find problems and fix them. Yeah, and then find I, solutions. I should say. Yeah, and so this is why it works really well because I can kind of come up with these cool ideas and pass them over to him. I don't have to do any of the work in terms of creating a tutorial, mm -hmm. and everyone gets a tutorial. Um, there was one recently that went down really well, which was um, a it was a device mock up. So it took the iPhone, the iPad, the MacBook, uh, Samsung phone, and it allowed you to put any content inside of it as if it were a um, real device. So you've missed one point, which is really important. The actual device was made up using CSS. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not a, an image, it's code that defines what the image looks like, which is, you know, to start with, it's pretty impressive. And then what you've done is you've, you found a way to get content, like website content, to go inside these devices. Yeah, so then when you scroll... Which is really can, cool. You can see it um, move inside and, um, yeah, it's like, it acts like a kind of a mock-up of a, a, a device. And you told the community about this and, and this particular um, person came to you and said, can I make a tutorial of this? Um, it wasn't, actually. I um, reached out, so I helped him uh, a while ago on... Um, using another piece of software because um, I'd, I'd, I'd used it before. So he came to me and asked me some questions like, you know, how did I get it working and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we've just become really good good friends. And he obviously releases all these tutorials. And, you know, I'm I'm happy to share what I've, what I've, I've found. And, you know, like I said, I don't have any interest in creating tutorials for people because I've got my own work. I'm busy with my own stuff. And I just don't have the patience to you know, explain stuff simply. Yeah. Um, and so being able to give him, give him all of the code snippets that I would use means that he benefits and mm -hmm. I benefit. I help by giving him back. He get he benefits by having the content. So that video was released last week. 
and what we'll do is we'll put a link to that in the show notes so that you can go and watch it it's very very well worthwhile watching it's great great tutorial um, and a great idea as well um, which leads me to another question your code snippets um, how do you keep your code snippets so that they're easy to find and and you know you can share them with other people if you need to um, so i use something called quiver which is a mac specific app mm -hmm. it's Try to explain it. It's probably similar to Evernote or uh, Notion, if you've ever heard of or used any of them, mm -hmm. where it's kind of like a library. It's like which, a note taker, though, isn't it? Yeah, and it allows you to have new entries for each note, and you can have different kind of style content. So you can have a code, code block in there, and you can have just basic text. You can put images in there, and it basically means I can put a bit of text about what the, the snippet does, how I use it, so where I put the code or whatever. Um, then the, the actual code itself and then a bit underneath, which maybe helps me in terms of where I need to do it and how I can integrate it. And this allows you to put code in because something like Evernote, I think, would struggle with code. Um, so you can put code in as a block and it would keep all the formatting. Yeah, it, it highlights it in syntax, highlights, uh, colour syntax, is it? Uh, okay, so it's actually designed for code snippets. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that that code bit is, but I mean, in general, it's just used. It can be used for whatever you want, really. Um, and I use that, and then I share it with both you and I have a friend um, who I share it with, who he's recently moving over to Oxygen. So he's and it's great because it. if I come up with or I find a snippet, um, I'm not going to come up with it. But if I find a snippet uh, that I think will be of interest to to you, I can put it in as well, and it will become accessible by you yeah. and everyone who's got access, which is which is really good. So it's sort of sharing, but in a limited way. Um, and then you can share the snippets to a wider audience um, if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, you should talk about um, Oxygen on Discord in a future episode, because that's that's quite a big topic, I think. Yeah. That's something definitely. you should look at doing. Okay. So I think that's everything from me. Yeah, same from me. Thank you for joining us. As always, uh, please like, subscribe, follow, um, and you can find us on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, you can also go to our website thisweekwith.co.uk, which will have all the past episodes, and you can um, go through them and look at the show notes, look, listen to the audio, or watch the video. Yeah. So we'll see you next week at 1 pm on Friday. Until then, it's goodbye from me. I'm Gordon from Drayson Design. And I'm Taylor from The Creative Tinker. <laughs> goodbye. goodbye. Hey!